Welcome to the second episode in a Legendarium series called The Worst Jobs in History. In this episode, Ancient Rome, we will talk about the Nomenclator, Ornatrix, Silentiarius, Armpit Plucker, and Teacher. In an age before smartphones, Roman bigwigs still had to keep track of the names of dozens, if not hundreds of family members, clients, friends, enemies, and business partners. To keep track of those names, they had a slave called the Nomenclator. Chosen for their ability to remember not only faces, but names, a few flattering personal details, or perhaps any outstanding loans that the person owned their master, they followed their owner around at the big social gatherings. Whenever someone approached, the Nomenclator fed their owner all the information they needed to greet them like an old friend. As rich and powerful Romans gathered more slaves, the most pretentious aristocrats even had nomenclators just to help them identify their own staff of thousands of slaves. An ornatrix, or Roman hairdresser, was typically a female slave in a well-off Roman household. A few others worked in beauty shops. At a glance, this might seem like a cushy job, but the ornatrix had to weave in falls and braids, not to mention ease on wigs, often made from hair shaved from the heads of other female slaves. The towering hairdos of patrician women took hours to prepare, with pins and curling irons. Finally, there was the dyeing of hair. To make raven black hair, the ornatrix may dye from walnuts, cuttlefish ink, gall, and rotting leeches. Bleaching was even harder, with the ornatrix mixing up pigeon feces and ashes, rubbing it into her mistress's hair, and then following it up with a urine rinse to give the mistress blonde hair. In an age before vacuum cleaners and dishwashers, most Roman households employed a sizable number of slaves to handle household work. The most hated job was the silentiarius. This would be a minor management figure within the household who carried a whip or rod. His only job was to keep the entire staff of slaves from making a single noise whenever the master or mistress was present. Even a sneeze or a cough could lead to a brutal whipping from the silentiarius. The job generally went to the most repulsive fawner or conniver on staff. He also beat the truth out of household slaves whenever someone committed a minor transgression like dropping a vase. Armpit pluckers worked in the public baths, where Romans went to perform their amateur athletics and, of course, get a bath. However, they also served as salons, with hair removal being a priority for many patrons. Armpit pluckers, obviously, removed armpit hair. They had to be strong enough to hold down their clients, often while they were screaming in pain. Most advertised by shouting in the bath, sometimes half dragging in customers. Typically, an armpit plucker used a razor, but they could also use pitch or beeswax if an armpit proved especially uncooperative. And for the most difficult cases, they called in a specialist called the dropacista, who removed the armpit hair with a mixture of donkey fat and goat gall. Finally, there was the teacher. Roman teachers were paid by parents directly and paid very little. A teacher had to get 15 pupils together just to earn what a mule driver did. They had no building and no rooms, so they held class outside on sidewalks and plazas or covered porticos whenever it rained. School began before dawn each day with students bringing in wax tablets for practicing their ABCs and oil lamps to see in the darkness. With no real oversight from parents or administrators, teachers were in full command of the classroom and many brought whips to maintain discipline. And that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.